so this is actual session yeah okay so we just start from the hadoop 3 so what is hadoop you have some idea right can you share me You have some idea, right? Okay, what is big data? Anyone? So, I mean, to handle big data, we uh, use uh, Hadoop. Basically, it uh, uh, breaks the data into multiple blocks and uh, processes the data and uh, fetches the results. So, that's why. We use Hadoop tools okay. in the data. Mm, big data is a collection of uh, <clears throat> structural, unstructured, and um, data. Okay, so what is the difference between big data and Hadoop? Hadoop is a, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, open source technology which processes uh, uh, data. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so simple, so as you say, correct. Hadoop is a framework tool. That's a tool. Big data is a tool. So those who are all can handle large number of data and all types. So that's the reason they are calling four Vs. Can you remember that? Volume. Yeah. Velocity. Velocity. And, uh, I think one more. Variety. Veracity. So this is a base. During that uh, big data uh, coming to the world, uh, they will be following this four V. Overall, will be satisfied. That is the big data tool platform. So any kind of value and uh, how we officially we can accessing the data, and that will be allowed with the different types of data and different platform. That are all will be called as a four Bs, and that will be suitable to any tools that they will be calling as a big data. That's it. So Hadoop is a kind of framework they will be introduced. That is the first framework for the big data platform. Before that, they everybody they will go with only the centralized system. That centralized system they have to follow with a huge competition. But Hadoop is not required. We can go with multiple scale of process. So that is the concept is called scale up and scaling. Later point we can discuss. This is a short terms. So this is completely working with JV. Okay, so now we are going to discuss about this Hadoop only. So this is a big data explanation. It's a term only, that's it. Okay, any question here? No, go ahead. Others? No, Dinesh. Okay, so before starting the Hadoop discussion, we must know about the databases. <coughs> How data will increase based on the database also, the selection will be modified. So 1973, NetBack database was introduced. That was introduced by Charles Backman. Those the guy only will be allowing for the network connectivity between the machines and transferring the data. It's like a, a Ethernet connections. We can transfer the data from one machine to another machine. It's a shared folder something that was introduced. And then database as a relational database was introduced. And uh, how many of you know about BC and that? Bice code normalization form. Anybody know the, about it? No. <laughs> okay. So that is an organization between the tables that based on that only all the relational databases are working. 
like a first normalization form, second normalization, third normalization, something is available. BCNF only, all the uh, relational databases are following. So that BCNF will be following that all the acid properties, atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. This is the majorly relational database should be satisfied. That will be satisfied by BCNF. Okay, and this is the guy BCNF was introduced. Before that, second normalization and third normalization, normalization they have some hiccup. But BCNF only majorly that all the all DBMS tools are using now. You said code, okay, and then nowadays the people will be moving to the distributed databases. So distributed databases means any idea? This is majorly playing the role across all over the world nowadays. What is distributed database? No. Okay. So nothing beyond it. If we will be transferring or sharing any data, it will be have a connectivity as well. It will be following the reliability with the data. That all will be comes with distributed database. Let's say for example, here one branch we will be using the same branch we can handle via our US you know, uh, location also. So whenever the data will be modified, it will immediately reflect to the same. So that all will be controlled by distributed databases only. Your network, uh, your uh, let's say for example, your transactions, whatever the transaction you are doing, you, with immediate effect, it will be reflected. So it will be a replica data as well as fault tolerance. Everything will be comes with this distributed database only. So distributed database is not only for the hardware, they will be using for the centralized. As a RDBMS also, they will be introduced. But it's mostly suitable for nowadays in hardware big data platform. Okay. And then modern database. Modern database means, what is modern database? Object relational model or column stores or modern database. Any idea? What is no SQL database? Not only SQL, uh, it stores data in column, column. Okay. How it will be different from the normal RDBMS? Uh, it can, uh, I think it can store uh, unstructured and unstructured data like media files and streaming data. Process it. Okay, we can process it, okay. But that is, we can achieve via RDBMS, right? Why we need to specially go for uh, NoSQL database? Because if it is a semi-structured data, we can convert as a structure format, and then we can store it. It's like exploding the data. That is possible, am I right? Why especially we have to go for the NoSQL databases? After processing. Oh, sorry. Can you come again? I cannot hear you. A faster processing of data. Uh, uh, okay. And then? Like uh, there will be a continuous uh, change in schema names, right? In uh, RDMMS, we cannot change the schema name once it is fixed. Yeah, exactly. It's a uh, NoSQL database. We it will be providing that one good way is uh, schemaless. Yes. Any kind of data we can unstructure the specific data. Any types we can access and we can modify. So it's a completely schemaless. That is the major reason we just move into our modern database NoSQLs because every day the data size will be modified. So we cannot assure that the schema is that correct schema only every day will come. Some days they will be providing a new column. Some days they will not be provided. If you're going to handle it in relational database, it will be a big impact to you. Because few times, again, again, you want to alter the table and you want to keep on monitor the table whenever the data comes with a new key. But in NoSQL database, all the data will be stored as a key value pair. 
you're just going to locate with your key as a column based and fetching the data. And database called NoSQL database, there is a lot of NoSQL databases there. So you heard about HSpace is a kind of NoSQL database. This is majorly for schemaless. So any other tools you know? MongoDB, Cassandra, and Influx TV, React, and Cosmos TV. SAP HANA also we have it. HANA is an aggregation SAP uh, uh, intelligence tool, right? I'm not sure that is a database. Is yeah, HANA is a database. database. For Oracle, they have used it. Instead of Oracle, they are used. Okay, I'm not sure. I didn't work with the SAP HANA, but it's a memory based tool, something they said. Uh, but I'm not sure about this database. Okay, in memory database, yeah, in memory database means it will be following with the relational or it will be followed with no SQL. Okay, no, I don't know. That's what I'm asking, just for my learning. In memory, in memory database, a lot of things is there. But whether it is follow with it, no SQL or SQL? It follows a columnar only. So if it follows columnar, so I think it is. No okay, SQL. let me check it. Hana, I will check it out. Okay, so any important table that I missed, these are all majorly using across the company. HBase, MongoDB, Cassandra, Influx TV, React, Cosmos TV, and as he said, Hana. But everyone is not equal similarity. There is some differences available. HSpace completely working with Hadoop environment, so Hadoop based tool. MongoDB is whatever the data that you are going to store it, that will be followed with document database. Cassandra is equally to be distributed and is a peer-to-peer -peer concept to fetching the data. Influx DB and React DB is a kind of time series handling uh, data. So whenever the data comes, it will not be located in any other thing. So only the data will be stored with the time based. That will be following with the time series. Mostly that time series handling, few of the separate cases are available. Then they will be using it. Cosmos TV is nothing but it will be working in the Azure Cloud environment. They will be following this uh, with the multiple integration platform with the MongoDB or Cassandra. So and it's a familiar with the Azure platform. And HANA, as you said, this is an in-memory. Uh, let me check it out about this one more time. Is it the database or something? I, I must know about it. But I just noted. Okay, so these many databases are there. So based on the business problem, they will be selected and they will be working together. If suppose you are going to select Hadoop as a, your distributed platform, all the data will be there. Then they majorly suggest to go with HPS tool itself because it will be followed with the same places to handle both data. So HSpace is very famous. Apart from MongoDB, further any web API related, they will be go with MongoDB. And Cassandra also is like a HSpace. But if suppose Hadoop is not used, that place Cassandra will be act. If suppose Hadoop is there, then they suggest to go with more majorly in HSpace only. So separately, we'll be discuss about HSpace topic and NoSQL databases at the time I can tell you. Any other question? As a data engineer, you must know the basics. This is okay, right? This is the history of databases is a big major. You want to know about the, all the databases, the basic level. Shall we go next? Yeah. Okay. I think no question. So 
So that relational database, whatever the database we have seen that have some capability to handle the data that we will be migrated to Hadoop environment. It will be a vast kind of data. We can handle it properly and distributedly. Everything in Hadoop will be stored as a file based file based object. Okay, separately I can mention Hadoop. So Hadoop is completely followed with the file objects. And it will be support all type of data. So here file object will be following with any kind of data we can distribute it and handle large files. Huge files, huge data, and it will be allowed for all type of data. Uh, Dinesh, I have a question. Are you writing anything? Like we could see only roadmap to Hadoop history. Notebook, I am writing. Are you able to see others? No. No, we are only able to see roadmap history of Hadoop. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, better I can reshare it. Yeah, now are you able to see? Yeah, now yes. we are. Okay. So I just discussed about the Hadoop. So huge data that will come under to volume. Multiple data will come to variety. Okay, so before starting the harder, we just go with the roadmap also. I can just further. So in 2004, Google was released to one white paper. One minute. So sorry, 2004, Google was re released to one white paper. That's a Google file system. They are how they are handling that data. They just providing the details about that. And 2006, he just referred the paper and created by its own with the Hadoop concept. But actually, her Docker team was working with the Google team. It's like a nudge project for their development of uh, cluster distributions with their uh, environment. That is called as a Google file system. There he was worked with them and will be created. And once they have released the white paper, he just come out and created Hadoop framework and change the name. It's absolutely copied from Google concept only. Okay, few the key demons name he was changed and introduced into the open source across the world. Once it is famous, and 2008, he just moved from Apache team to Cloudera. Cloudera as a distribution. He has just moved from Apache team to Cloudera and he will be joined there. And, sorry, uh, Cloudera was incorporated. Hadoop based or distribution tool was introduced in 2008. 2009, he is just going to join with Cloudera team. Once he joined and then it will be making all the development with Hadoop platform. And 2010, all the ecosystem will be connected via Hadoop. That was only Hadoop 2 was introduced. Hadoop 1 major issue is we cannot handle with uh, without MapReduce. So whatever we have to create a MapReduce code, then only we can handle it. But 2010, they have released Hadoop 2 expression that they will be allowing with multiple ecosystem that will be act as it that user friendly and back end it will be working with mapd it's like a generic code like what are the tool you heard about hive spar scoop whatever that will be following not as far hive and other ecosystem also like that it was 
changed the reason behind if you are going to work with a map produce if any changes is required on this on the business problem you cannot modify it immediately that is the one problem was raised because if any changes or small changes that you want to do in the code entire the code will be clash because map produce is completely they have developed in java based so that's the big impact they have faced during the time after 2010 it was very famous because all the query based on the user friendly they will be providing like a select star from it back end it will be converted as a map produce and going to be fetched up we are going to see this during the ecosystem platform how it will be convert how the map produce will be working with other ecosystem that real time we can see that and 2018 lost to two years back uh, actually 2018 december at the end they have released hadoop 3 expression and then hadoop 3 expression more flexible to compare with hadoop 2 expression so all the company they are moving to the hadoop 3 expression now they have validated because that's a lot of cost to benefit they will be getting here hadoop 2 expression they have to handle all the data with normal uh, replica factor and they have to log some spaces for the replication also but how to three expression they have avoided that things so that is all we are going to discuss it okay this is a just a road map only any question here no what is the biggest uh, uh, difference between 2 and 3 version yeah later last it will be available i will show you that just wait for a few minutes okay we will discuss majorly hadoop 2 and 3 i will tell you 1 and 2 also okay any other question no okay so this is the sample architecture this is the how google will be using this platform gfs master that is working as a master to collect all the index and metadata information gfs chunk server to handle their slaves and doing all operations this will be following with the map produce concept only here here the same in hadoop architecture instead of the google gfs master they are calling as a name node all the chunk server they are calling as a data node so there is a lot of demon concept is available so we can discuss little later okay this is for the comparison purpose i just take it out how google will be working how the hard pocket is working okay so this is the big data actually here only we just start about the big data concepts so already i said big data is a term to handle large data that's it hard it is a framework term and in hadoop they will be following four layers the storage layer process layer resource management and ecosystem these four only majorly they will be using so storage layer scale and different from the large data and processing layer how you are efficiently handling your data resource management that will be following your workload how much the data sorry how much the resources needed for each particular work because you will be going to fetch the data from hadoop environment you want to allocate some resources as a ram and code that are all will be controlled by resource management and ecosystem based on the flexibility we will be selecting the ecosystem because that business and the capable of the user they will be go with ecosystems okay in story layer they are calling as hdfs hadoop written file system it is a linux based command they will be using it so what are all the data you want to fetch out from the hadoop environment you must know the basics of linux commands so if you don't know we can during the session we can cover about it totally and hdfs will be follow with a name node and data node the data storage spaces and it will be following with replica replication by default in 3 2x is to be in 3 but the same replication in 3x they are using different concept errors or encoding concept so we will discuss later about this okay just to i am giving the overview 
and block allocation how the data will be stored by default hadoop to expression they will be storing the data with 128 mb block size and data ingestion they will be go with sdfs commands web stfs http fdfs and etc web stfs and http fs that are all will comes with rest api integration more majorly that web a developer who wants to fetch the data or store the data they will be using web stfs and http fs that's a separate as a big data engineer you must know how you are going to handle the data via commands so that is SDFS comments. So in processing layer, map and reduce to they will be using so this completely follow with programming based data processing. Okay, so here map that's everything will be followed with key value pair. Reducer will be go based on the key value pair to take the decision. And processing layer, they will be split by input split and sort and suffering. I just note all the demons you understand. So name node, data node, secondary name node, resource manager, also known as job tracker. Node manager, also known as task tracker, manager, node manager, okay. application master container. <laughs> It's not okay, and then container, container, and then heartbeat block report, block size, data pass to be sent, then we'll be fishing out, and then. E edit log high availability A replication response to continue log image file uh yeah first images yeah first FS images, fault tolerance, mm -hmm. and, yeah, input split, because that is understanding between the blocks and input split, and high availability will come with Zookeeper. Application for FS images, edit in fault tolerance, yarn, <coughs> and then total one, two, three, four, five, seven, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Um, journal node and all. Which one? Journal node for. Uh, Separate mm -hmm. if they will be using they can that's a decommissioning mode, right? So uh, not it uses to like uh, Restrict uh, I guess it's it's in fault tolerance only Yeah, internet will come actually edge node you are talking about journal no, no. Uh, It uses to restrict uh, faulty nodes into live, live environment it's uh, what what we say it uses by zookeeper uh, technology yeah um, yeah internally they will be using because there only the zookeeper will be running i guess journal ctl and all 
Okay, but we are saying that as a not a zookeeping. Sorry, journal note that we are calling as the edge note something. It's apart from the big data cluster. It will be separately working to keep and monitor it. Correct? Am I right? Uh, no, I am talking about uh, no uh, the service which restrict the fault faulty nodes to key like uh, it's using no, name node availability only. I guess if primary node goes down, that's then uh, active go. active node and passive node. Uh, exactly. Active and passive node, something we are calling. No, so uh, not active node and passive node. So it's uh, name node and secondary node, name node will work as active node and passive node, I guess. Yeah. Correct. Okay, let me check it out. That is a part of Arbin, I guess. What is journal node? I will check it out. As a developer, we have no about this. Okay. Okay. HDFS, I think we must try it. The HDFS, the uh, demons, these are also the demons. HDFS is a tools, that's a four layer that I mentioned, right? Yeah. So HDFS is a story layer. There, the demons, how it is working, and uh, what are the keys they're using. So that is what we are discussing. Here, everything will be available. So HDFS, that commands, and HDFS internal only name node data will be active. That we mentioned, map list we can mention. And resource management, yarn we can discuss. Cluster management and ecosystem separate. So these are all the hard internal demands, how it is working, and history server. Uh, history server is a journal node or something. Okay, so anyhow, I'll check it out. Where does okay. Kafka come in here? Sorry? Kafka, Kafka tool. I didn't get it. Kafka. Kafka, yeah. Kafka and Zookeeper work in unison, right? Yeah, that is the ecosystem part. This is the Hadoop internally, how the Hadoop is working. What are all that they will be using the concept internally with Hadoop? Ecosystem is separate. Kafka is a kind of ecosystem. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we can see some architecture view, then it will be helpful. So in hard up. There will be already a said there is a demon system and there will be everything there will be as a machine that machine will be connected together and install all the Hadoop framework internally and it will be working as a master slave approach. Okay, so let's say for example, this is a master node. This is all four will be a machine only, but one we are deciding as a master node, as a name node, and rest of them will be working as a slaves, as a data node. Okay. So this connectivity is available as a client, whatever they will be raising the request for one minute. Okay. So I am the client, I want to communicate with the Hadoop, whatever the data, it first goes to Hadoop, name node only. Name node for the data ingestion or something, it just referred where the data or where we have to store the data. 
<laughs> because while you're storing the data, you cannot specifically storing that particular data on one or two or three. But there is a command, but majorly they will not be doing that thing. So whatever the data, it's distributedly it be stored across your system. And with the replica, it, that same data will be replicated in other nodes. And one more concept is block scanner. This replication. Okay, so the same data will not be replicated in same data node. Due to the fault failures, it will be handled the data in separate places. So different different blocks of data only will be stored. And that replica data majorly they are using to fetching very fast reason. That is the major reason they are using it. Okay, so two things, fault tolerance and data handling efficiently. Both will be used. So let's say I'm the client, I'm going to store one GB of data to that Hadoop framework, first in name node can decide where it wants to store. And then allow to store into the data nodes. Once the data has inserted, that all the information will be stored in name node. That's like a meta store. So that particular directory, this file will be stored, the directory name, and what was the file name, what is the file name, and how many replication was happened, what is the block size, what is the total size of that particular data, how many blocks will be stored, all the information will be captured by name node. Okay, <clears throat> that is the, the main reason, whenever you're raising the query, it's just going to locate that and fetching the data from that Hadoop environment very efficient manner. That is the reason these are all the information that will be stored in name node. Okay, so okay. once the data will be that metadata information we just collected, data will be stored. Then I want to do some analysis. So this data storage, everything will be called as a Hadoop SDFS. It's a storage layer. Name node doesn't store any data. It just only have the metadata information about your data, data dictionary. That only available in name node. Actual data will be stored in this environment. Okay, any confusion or any doubts here? All of you? Shall we go next? Yeah. So name node will be stored in metadata information. Then I will come back to active and passive name node. So data node will be stored actual data. Okay. And if suppose name node is not available, this name node is going to be dead we cannot handle the data properly, am I right? Because where the data will be stored, that is all the information available in name node only. If suppose it's going to be down, then where the data, actual data will be stored into the across the data node, we cannot fetch to. That's the reason they are separately creating one node is called the secondary name node. So this is both will be communicated and actively will be available. Once name node will be going down, secondary name node will be taking as a name node. It's keep on alive, but this information will be stored into, sorry, this, whatever the replica information will be stored via name node, the same data will be updated here, but little bit until name node is inactive. Suppose if name node is going to be failed here, something was happened, it just identified and it will be kickstarted. That concept is called a high availability. Okay, so immediate fact because if it is take some delay, it will take some delay to kickstart then what are all the business continuity that's going to be a failure. So this high availability, just wait for one or two seconds and then it just kick started. It's a keep on alive only. Once the secondary name node is enabled, your continuous job will be running and will be report to the secondary name node. Directly instead of name node, it just reported. And once finalized and what is the issue with the name node once we have identified, 
once we recall so resolve that issue then name node will be written back to that same place secondary name node will be act, uh, work as a passive node it's like a, a watcher only about the metadata okay And now I'm saying this is the active and passive is nothing but which one is active as a name node that is called as active. Which is, is a waiting for and passively um, working for the same process that once it is active node is going to be down at the time only passive node will be going to act. It. So second name node always has a passive name node and active name node is normal name node only. Okay, and due to some data handling and the cluster basis, this active and passive neighborhood, they will be go with uh, multiple. Because they must want to store the data. Their entire business, if it is moved to the Hadoop, they want to secure the data. Because this Hadoop environment completely follow with data warehousing also. So that's the reason they will be separated this. And major difference between the Hadoop 1 and Hadoop 2. Hadoop 1, we don't have this concept. High availability is not available. So Hadoop 1, high availability. Hello, sir. Sorry. Yeah, uh, can, you hear, can you hear my voice? Sorry, come again. Can you hear, yeah, can you hear my voice? I'm not getting. Yeah, can you hear my voice? Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, so what's the relationship between master node and slave node? Can you tell me one more time? Yeah, master node is a name node. It will be stored the metadata. Let's say, for example, I'm going to store one GB of data. Okay. 1 GB of TXT file, I'm going to store it. So name node have all the information about the data. So data size, 1 GB. So it will be taken out based on the bytes only for the reference. File size is 1 GB. Replication, 3. And mm -hmm. replication, where are all it will be replicated? What are the data nodes? So what are the data node will be replicated by three, that information and which is a network efficiency very low, that information also will be stored and file formats. What kind of file you have stored, that information. And then directory. Which directory you are going to store it. That information will be stored. And data size, some block size. What are the block will be stored. File size, replication, data node information, file format, and the first block information. So this are also a major thing. This is a, this are also metadata, right? It just know about data about data. That is called as a metadata. Beyond not beyond that, nothing it will be stored. So whenever you're calling the same file, it's just going to locate and fetching the data. In if suppose any data node is failure, the same data where it is available based on that edit the data node information, it's just going to be collect and will inform you. Okay, that is the use of this data node. Data node information. So this is called as a name node, master node will be stored. Data node actually this one GB data will be stored. It just request via name node, whether it is confirmed, then this data node will be split in, and by default 128 MB, I said, right? It will be sliced to 128 MB for each, and it will be come to eight blocks, I guess. So two blocks will be stored here. So let's say, for example, 256 MB of data will be stored with the two blocks. Here, 512 MB as a four block. And here, 
256 MB I think. Two blocks. Likewise, it will be splitted and stored. And this replica. This is the four block data will be stored. The same data will be replicated to this environment also. Here it will be stored the block data and few blocks will be stored here. Vice versa, this block information also will be stored here. The same data will not be replicated into the same data. Likewise, it will be separate across the cluster. It's like a distributed. Okay. Any other question? So, Hadoop, uh, I mean, internally, does it recognize the node uh, capacity like CPU and RAM and does this four block thing? Or randomly does it do it? It's a, we are doing no, it. it's a based on it's randomly will be doing based on the size allocation and the spaces of where it's available because few data nodes will be you'll be created very huge size, yeah. And few data node you will not be created, right? So it will be a uh, the data node size will be vary, so it will be going to identify the utilization how much it lies to, for each data node based on that, it's going to be load the data majorly, okay. So these data nodes are only primarily for this uh, Hadoop uh, environment only. There will be no other things that will be processed in those nodes, right? Will no, be... actually the data will be stored. The processing layer, they will be using different concept. I will come to that in a few minutes. Any other question? Uh, Dinesh? Yeah, tell me. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just asking a general question. So this is recorded, right? Yeah. Okay, I just wanna make sure. I just wanna go over I think, one, one more time after the class. Yeah, okay, sure. It's okay. already recording, no worries. Okay? Okay, sure. So now come back. They just started Hadoop 1 and 2. You can mention no high have a, no high availability and that is called as a spoof single point of failure okay so in Hadoop on next second in name mode is there yes. any idea no no in uh, they don't have second in number in Hadoop one are you sure? Yes. No, actually, secondary name node is available. That high availability one is not there. If suppose name node is going to be failure, immediately the secondary name node will not be active. Okay, so manually we have to enable it. That's so the secondary name node is uh, uh, mainly working for uh, writing the FS image and uh, the, like uh, writing the edit log on the uh, Convert to FS image, right? The secondary yes. name node. Yes, yes. That no, it's not writing that information. Name node one will be written. FS image and edit log. Once it is going down, name node, it's going to refer that images and will be stored with your business operation. Name node only will be doing. It just keep on active to monitor your name node. That part also will be covered by Zookeeper. But FS image, edit log, everything will be stored by this name node itself. Okay, the Zuki, the Zookeeper concept, it come from uh, Hadoop two, right? In the yarn after the exactly. yarn, exactly. so it came right. Exactly, that is the answer. That's what I raised the question just before. Second, yeah, yeah, yeah so, sorry. And the Zookeeper will decide uh, who should be the uh, uh, like manager. Like a name, uh, primary note, uh, first name note or second name note, right? Yeah, exactly. That is the main use of Zookeeper. In yeah. Hadoop 1, there also they will be introduced to second name node, but without Zookeeper. That's the reason no high availability I just mentioned. If suppose name node going to be down, manually the people going to start the second name node. Okay. Like we have to do it by manually, right? So yes, we, don't, exactly. we don't have that automation. So no, we don't have Zookeeper automation was introduced in Hadoop 2X. Uh, yeah, in Yarn, after the Yarn. 
yeah once yan yan and zookeeper concept will be introduced in 2x version because they have seen some drawback in 1x they have modified it in 2x and then i have uh, one more question and then yes. we can uh, that 128 mb is like optimal right so we can change it like we can make it like 50 mb or 60 mb or maybe 200 mb right so in the box, box size like, also you can modify it by default they will be providing and suggested 128 mb if you are using a huge data based on your computation speed you can change that value also in real time that cloud environment right that uh, what is this uh, uh no, no one likes to change yeah the major company they will not be using 256 mb major that vast data world is running like a facebook or twitter they are all modified that mb size to 512 1gb sizes block size because they have a enough computation power to handle the capable data so that they will be modified we can do that by manual also via coding during the hdfs commands we can see that also yeah okay. and uh, the last question is uh, and the in, in interview they will ask the input, uh, logical speed and uh, yeah and that i will i will come to that that i noted right these are all majorly they will be asking that interview point that is uh, what noted input speed and block size physical, physical and logical i will come to yeah, that yeah okay. go on bro yeah thank you thank you any other question guys so what is the main difference of hadoop 1.x and uh, hadoop 2.x that is we are discussing now i will tell you okay. hadoop 1 what are the drawback i just mentioned right so that all will be sub, uh, sorry, resolved by hadoop 2 expression and then i will come to hadoop 3 okay you will get some clarity here i guess So, what is the default block size in Hadoop One? That will be a one twenty eight MB. Okay. Sorry, sixty four MB Hadoop One. They will be upgraded to one twenty eight Hadoop Two. Okay. Okay. But that's not a drawback here. Based on your data size, they will be modified. And Hadoop One and Two, I'm talking now. Okay. Any other question? So, so is it like that the uh, the If uh, data size is big in petabyte, then block size will get increase or it will get decrease. Block size—that's the depends on your data. If it is a petabyte of data, that total is a petabyte, then they will be go with block size one twenty eight itself. If suppose the data will go to zettabyte, it's like a one trillion of gigabyte data. then data handling very huge and your computation also will be take more time that time they will be migrate that block size it uh, depends on your data size they will be modified so the, they will migrate the block size bigger than 128 mb or uh, smaller than 128 mb that yes. while they are migrating the data it will be uh, come again your question bigger so than my, so my question is like uh, if my data is into zettabyte so do i need to uh, modify the block size more than 128 mb to uh, smoother co compute and all or uh, lesser than 128 mb that is a two nature of thing we have to focus it if it is a files it will be following with the terabyte of size data let's say for example each data of file will be a terabyte of size Uh, then we can go to change the block size to 128 to 1 GB or 2 GB also. If the block that file size will be only the GB, like a multiple file, then by default 128 MB is enough. I will later come to that point and will clearly tell about it. There we have to change it because majorly hard to be suggest to use for big size of files only. So whatever the file will be selected, the file size. Based on that, you have to select the block size. Okay, there so is a connectivity layer is there. So basically, it depends. It not depends on of the cluster size. It depends on the file size. How many big files block, you have? Yeah, block size follow with your uh, file size only. Cluster okay. size will be follow with how much your data. Let's yeah. say for example, you are handling one petabyte of data into three replica. So three petabyte of data you must. Need some space in your cluster. Then only you can store the data. Exactly. Am I right? 
So, and then how we are going to handle the data. You have to allocate for your internal OES and processing layer and caching, everything you want to calculate it. Yeah. So that are all we will be calculate. Then only they will be creating the Hadoop just cluster. So blindly they cannot do that. Okay. It's a difference on your file system, how much the data resource you are going to use it. That are all they have to calculate. Based on that only they will be suggesting you. Okay. 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 So I'm come back here. Hadoop One X, no high availability. No uh, single, this, uh, single point failure. If it is failure, we cannot um, so automatically will be started. We have to do it by manually. So how do admin part majorly will be playing here. And one more is neon concept is not available. So only map and reduce can work. Apart from map reduce, we cannot do any other things, but Hadoop 2x the same. Instead of the no high availability, they will be using Zookeeper to monitor it if it is failure. So this zookeeper, what is doing? It's just going to locate name node and what is it? Data node information also. So this both will be identifying based on the block sizes, some like a pulse. Based on this, just located whether it is active or not. All the information will be identified by zookeeper. In case any failure across your name node or data node, this is only take the decision and will be following up with your uh, next priorities. That is called as SDFS. Sorry, Federation SD uh, Federation. If I get the full name, one minute. Okay, SDFS Federation, I guess. SDFS Federation. So that only will be controlled to take the decision across your name node. So name nodes or Zookeeper can identify whether name node are active or not. Like that, it will be checking for every few seconds. That based on that hot bits. Okay, so heartbeat is not received within a time period, then Zookeeper can consider, okay, name node state. Immediately just inform to SDFS Federation, this name node is failure like that. So immediately, SDFS Federation will be identified and will be take the responsibility to secondary name node. Then only secondary name node will take the in charge with your Hadoop cluster. Until that, it will not be doing anything. Are you clear? Any question here? How can we term HDFS Federation as? Is it like... Uh, mm. HDFS Federation is like a academy team. They will only take the decisions, whether it be what we have to do. There is some change rule is there in HDFS Federation. Based on that, it will be act immediately. Because Zookeeper is just to monitor tool. Let's say, for example, name node, some connectivity failure between the zookeeper and name node. Then it consider name node as failure. Am I right? Because I didn't get any proper communication from her, that uh, name node due to some network failure. But immediately that uh, secondary name node will not be acted. So SDFS Federation, it just report to SDFS Federation. SDFS Federation is going to be validate whether it is correct or not within a time period. Yeah, your uh, agreement is true. Okay, we can take some decision to take with your secondary name or something. Okay. Because Zookeeper is a monitor tool, that's it. It's like a alerts. Hmm. Just trigger some warning to that uh, federations. Okay. 
So I guess Zookeeper, uh, Zookeeper is coordinator tool than monitor tool. Yeah, so it's coordinator. Beyond that, nothing it won't it won't do. Yeah. I just for example, I said as a monitor tool, it's a coordinator tool. Yes. Okay. So this is called hard bits. So how many seconds hard bit will send to Zookeeper? Any idea? Every three seconds. Yeah. Correct. Every three seconds. So if you want to see, okay, I can open my cluster also. We can see that heartbeat interval everything in Hadoop environment. Okay, we can see later sometime. We have a command to see that. And again, I'm come back. So till now, any question? You may confuse in some points. So so, here, yes. I parameter, different parameter. Yeah, I put different parameter here. Which one? Why is this breaking? What about now? Hello? Hello, why is this breaking, ma'am? Yeah, uh, tell me. What, ab what about now? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Yeah. So when you say SP, uh, single uh, point of failure, that yeah. means what do you mean? Single point. To come back? Uh, which means single point of failure is nothing but once the name node is failure, Immediately, the second in end node will not be acting in Hadoop 1x. Okay. This okay. architecture completely follows with the Hadoop 2x right now we are discussing. But Hadoop 1x, name node there, the second in name node there, if it is dead, the secondary name node will not take the responsibility immediately. Okay, okay, I see. I see. No question. Okay. Yeah. Others, any question? No, no, no. Have we started Hadoop uh, 3.0 right now? Or? Yeah, yeah. Once the demons has discussed, we have installed everything with Hadoop 3 only. Hadoop yeah. 3 stable version only we have installed in our VM for the practice purpose also because all the company will be moved to Hadoop 3. I'm pretty sure. Nobody is using Hadoop 2x nowadays because there is a benefit they will be getting. Mostly migration projects, those who are all start from the new, they completely moved to Hadoop 3x. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. And uh, I have one doubt. Um, and the name node is like an active node, and then uh, standby node, right? We have like a, another active uh, uh, passive node, right? Yeah, correct. So in the uh, in the intermediate between two nodes, they have one uh, another node, right? We have it because uh, that, pausing the message or something. Do we have it? Uh, it's not like that. That is I'm saying. It depends on the cluster basis. They will be select using standby name node also one more. Okay, because that both will be inactive. Name node, in case of failure, it will not be wait for the second name node enable. Standby name node also is available, but depends on the cluster sizes, they will be selected. But passive and active, two minimum is needed for a cluster access. Uh, access. Okay, if, if you want, we can add it like a secondary name node also, right? Yeah, so possible. If need, so we can add it. Standby name node, we can add it. Secondary name node should be a only one. Standby name node, the same will be a same thing. It will be in two cluster sizes. So two no mission will be controlled. It. Yeah, if yeah. you're going to use more than uh, thousand cluster, then they'll be using standby name node concepts. Mm, yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we just come here. So, till now you're clear, right? There's any question? What is the maximum number of nodes that uh, Hadoop can manage? Name uh, data. Yeah, that is a one drawback in Hadoop 2. I will tell you what are all the drawback in Hadoop 2. Okay, once we clear, we'll go step by step. During the end of session, we'll discuss everything. Okay.
Yeah, Dinesh. Uh, so you were saying about the standard no name node. So what exactly it is? It's like a name node only, but if you want to handle very huge size of the data, then standby name node separately won't be available. Secondary name node is different, and standby name node is different. Uh, whatever is active, that is called as active name node. Secondary name node is a passive name node. When it is going to be down, passive name node will be taking the responsibility. Standby name node, whatever is an active name node, will be a supported active name node. Because it want to handle large data, has a large size of data. At the time, standby name node also will be supported. Because a lot of the data will be continuously injected and we'll be doing some analysis. So majorly, I have seen only one project. They will be go with the two name node integration in further active. That was a 1,400 cluster I have used there. And data size is also very huge. So utilization, validation, and what are all the request permission, they'll be go with standby name. So likewise, they can restrict it. But other company, they may, they only use it for active and passive only. Okay. So in uh, standby name node concept, how how it will coordinate between like uh, main main node and standby node? No, no, or... both will be the same only. Let's say the name node and standby name node, they will be providing the FS images. It just communicate together and take the decision with the FS images, edit log everything. Whenever the request will come, so it will be taking that. It will be splitting their work internally. That's it. Okay. Okay. When we say client, uh, client can be a file or ETL system or it can be something like that, right? Yeah, client will be right. First to handle the 10 GP of data. During that time, name node is very busy to a uh, lot of work. So it takes uh, minimal latency. To avoid that, they will be go with another one and interact with that client and take the decision. Whichever is a free, they will be taking the responsibility. Passive name node is nothing but once name node is going to be down at the time only secondary name node as a uh, passive node will be taking the responsibility. But active name node itself, if they want to take any decision, they'll be using standby. Okay, majorly the people will not be used a few cases only they'll go with the standby. Otherwise active name, name node is one enough. Okay. But uh, the heartbeats are only received by the primary name node. Yeah, exactly. So okay. in data nodes, uh, so th uh, data will be stored in the form of files or uh, any tables like that? No, file object only. On top of the file object layer, you can create any layer, tables. That all will come to hive concepts. How you are going to store the data, how you are going to apply with your uh, table concepts. That we will be discussing. So when we try to retrieve the data from the data nodes, so uh, it will fetch us from the tables or uh, the files? No, table is not a direct table. Okay, whatever the data that you're going to store, you will just locate the directory and store the file. That's it. On top of the layer, how we are going to handle the data while you're doing the slicing and dicing concept, they will be using some table method. It's like a meta table that will be comes with this high introduction during the time i will go in depth in that part that survey what is the survey concept how the data will be stored where the data will be stored everything we can see there okay okay guys any questions shall we go next so hadoop 1x and 2x we have discussed so this majorly this three, Hadoop 2x, they will be avoided via this no availability with Zookeeper, Yarn was introduced, and ecosystems. So this is the three, they will be additionally for this failure, they will be using it. Okay, they can allow a number of ecosystems on top of the Hadoop layer. Clear? So if anybody asking you how to one and two expression difference, so no availability, spoof is a problem, and map reduce concept. That is the problem with the one X. They all resolved based on the Zookeeper, Yarn, and ecosystems. Okay. 
What's the time now? Okay, 8.18. Okay, we can take 10 minutes break and we can sit back. Okay, guys? Yep. Yeah, sure. Okay, so 8.30 we will connect back, okay? Okay. Yeah. So here, this is the VM that you are going to use it for your self-practice. Hadoop version. So 3.2, that is um, planned because this is a stable version one of our Hadoop environment, Hadoop 3F. So here only you will be doing all the practice. Okay. So what we have before discussed. So heartbeat. So if you want to see the heartbeat here, via command, we can see that. FDFS, get config, open conf, correct. Let me check. Correct. And iPhone, conf. Key. So based on the key, we are going to locate it. TFS dot hard beat dot interval. Conf DFS get config DFS DFS get config conf key single. Okay, so here it just mentioned as a three seconds. So likewise, beat heartbeat. What is the beat? We can check it out here. Okay, this is the command it will help to fetching that information. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next we can see about block report. So what is block report? Kind of metadata information. About what? Okay, data, data about the data. Okay, each block they have information um, um, about the data. Like a zero, one, two, three, or not zero, zero, one. This kind of information we can store in metadata. So in the metadata information, it's called a block, block report. Yeah, so for a respective data where it is stored. So here, name node have the block information, right? This block information is referred by the block report only. So let's say for example, one GB of data that I've stored. So this block only two block will be allocated for this one GB data. Data node two, four block will be allocated. This information will be stored into block report. So block report will be internally available in data node, but it's reported to Zookeeper or name node. Which the information will uh, will get, send it to name node. Zookeeper one, Zookeeper only uh, resource alloc uh, like managing the uh, demons. Yeah, exactly. So name node, the block report, all the information sent to name node. So name node only just validate about the block details. Suppose any block is going to be crashed. Immediately name node can understand based on the block report why it was happened something and it will be reallocate the data to any new commissioned data node. If suppose I'm going to create a new data node as a data node 4 And data node one is going to be in failure, dead. Or something was happened in one. So something in data node one is going to be crashed. Immediately, whenever you include the new commissioned data, immediately name node will transfer all the data from data node one to Data node one, two, four. 
once transferred then only it allowed to store rest of the data okay this is the use of block report information in suppose any failure with the data node then immediately it can be identified and immediately will take the decision with other data node is there anything is available existingly i just mentioned only for three node cluster four node cluster right now if i'm using a 10 node cluster data node one is going to be failure it will be transfer all the data to data node two and three or four and five any across in between the 10 nodes it will be modified that is the reason it will be following the replication count one gp data will be stored across your data nodes but data node is one going to be failure what are all the data nodes or blocks will be stored that information it does replica from other so that same data will be available data node two and three am i right so based on that it just replicate the data to some other environment hello yeah yeah i have no doubt actually uh, in the data node one if it's failure so the data will take from two and three right so the data one is not uh, going to send the data to data node four right yeah that processing will be take care by two one three data node with the name node but actual only two replicas there but you mentioned as a three replication yeah we can add it four yeah yeah while you're adding any suppose this is adding new commission data i am using 10 node cluster so data node one is going to be failure two and three or two and five or two and ten something or three and ten any places replica data available while name node going to be checked whether the replica data is properly available or not only two replication is happened immediately where which one is a free there it will be replicate the third data okay yeah you like this so you will not be lose any data here correct it keep on save your data like this internally it will be doing this kinds of concept is called a block scanner okay so block scanner is a top layer with the block report that block report will be uh, evaluated by name node where yeah? Mm, yeah any question guys others any question no no so that is the block report oh. report to name node and block size we know very well how it will be working with 128 mb default 1x hadoop 1x version they are using 64 mb they are upgrade to 128 mb default for hadoop 2x version okay okay before start the to the input split and block size i want to discuss about this topic also there is a connectivity layer so what is edit log then Uh, how to check the size of block size uh, in Hadoop? Yeah, I will, I will see. I will show you that. Just give me some time. Okay, so what is the difference between block report and edit log? So edit log will be available in a secondary name node. So it uh, stores the information about the uh, like a um, heartbeat signals. Mm, you are close to correct, but uh, it's not stored in secondary name node. So I did uh, not. It will store from one to thousands. So after that, it it will convert to FS image. So it's kind of only log. Yes. Yeah. So I did logs mainly contain transaction uh, details. Mm. Uh, whatever transaction happens in Hadoop, it will. Uh, Save the logs into edit logs as as edit logs as per yeah. transaction wise. Yeah, exactly. So whenever you are going to create a table data, or you are going to store the data, you are creating a directory, or you are going to delete the directory, all the information will be stored. 
So all the recent activities will be stored in edit log. This edit log of SDFS. This edit log will be create as a FS images. Okay. So how many seconds will be sent? Sorry, how not a second. So that interval time interval. Anybody? I think three seconds. No. It will be based on uh, activity, I guess, on transaction basis. So if you are not transfer any data for one day in, with the hard disk, so that it will not be sent any information. So will it not be create any FFS images? Yes, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so if no activity was happened, then FS image will not be raised. But it just validated every five minutes. Okay. Okay, so every five minutes it just validated and based on that, it will be create that FS images. Okay, that are all recent activities. If you're going to change the data, you're moving the data from direct one directory to Hadoop another directory. So all the information will be identified. Based on that, if you're moved, that will be stored into the FS images. Okay, I will not, I didn't touch into the FS images. We can discuss that now. The so block scanner will come with data node. Okay, it just identifies all the data equally, sorry, normally will be available or anything missed or any data node failure. That information only in block scanner there. And edit log every five minutes, it's just validate and create the FS images. And what is FS images? Now we can see. So FS image is nothing but it's like a snapshot about your data and metadata information. What is the use of that mainly? In interview also they will be asking oh, what is the reason we have to use the FS images? So we can uh, we can fetch the history transaction details like uh, uh, full path of uh, files and all the directory path information the date and all so. Each and everything, uh, information about uh, files, directories, and all we can fetch history related data, back, back data, related data from FS image. Mm. Okay, before come to the FS image, I have raising one question. How the name node is working, whether it is working with a disk or RAM? RAM. So it uh, depends upon uh, like a two point, in the uh, Spark, it will work on RAM. In what in, in yeah no it's only work on disk. Mm, others where is name node is working? So name node basically required huge RAM size and data node uh, requires huge uh, disk disk data size because uh, name node uh, like eighty percent work uh, on memory itself. Exactly. Name node working with always it will be working with a RAM only. Okay, because if it is a disk operation, then delay will happen. So that all the information, metadata information, once name node is started, all the will be moved into the RAM and will be keep on continue and monitor it. So always name node without RAM, it will not be working. Okay. That's a major because metadata information. I'm just sending a request to name node. I want to retrieve the data. So client and the retrieve the data, store the data. Immediately name node is going to be check it out with the RAM and then it just started. Suppose if it is working with the disk, then what will be happening? This request will take few seconds. And then only we can get the metadata information. Once we collect the metadata information, then only we can interact with your data node. It will be a delay performance will happen. 
So that's the reason name node always working with the RAM itself. You're getting my point? Yeah, yeah, Mr. Uh, Dinesh, one question. Yeah, please. Yeah, let's say we have passed one file, let's say of 10 million records. Okay. And uh, again, we are passing the same file with another 10 million records. So will the name node ident identify the delta records and push them to the data nodes or mm. it identify as a new file? Okay, I have uh, one question for you. So the same, whether the file will be stored in the same directory or different directory? Same, same uh, I mean, we are passing it like the client is passing the file with the delta changes. Uh, yeah, that is, I agree. Okay. That will be located in the same directory. Yeah, same directory, let's say, yeah. Then it should be overwrite. Oh, okay. Because the reason behind the already name, sorry, file is there with the same name. It will not be occupied that file. So once we have to overwrite or we want to skip the, mm -hmm. okay, like that the mode is there. Based on that, we can handle the data. If it is a different directory, no issue. Okay. If it's a different directory, it will identify the delta changes, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we have to uh, I mean, plan before doing that. Yeah, correct. Okay. okay. Guys, any other question? And uh, if the RAM is uh, like completed, uh, the metadata information, it will store in this uh, disk also, right? Uh, not exactly, but moreover, it will not be uh, uh, stored into the disk. And I just want to tell you, the name node have all the information, right? That's a metadata information, very minimal. The actual data is a huge data. Let's say one GP data, one GP is almost 10 millions of records there. That will be stored in disk. We don't have any other option. But this one million data, we have metadata only for five records. Just to file size, replication, where the data, file format, which directory and block information. Only this seven or six information only will be stored. This is a minimal, not a byte also. It's like a less byte size. This information will be stored. So based on your cluster data sizes, they will be declaring and creating RAM, sorry, a name node. That they will be providing capable. Okay. You're getting me point? If suppose I'm going to store the 1GP in RAM, then it is not sufficient for us. But we just store the data, actual data will be stored in data now. About the data information, you know very well about me. My name is Dinesh and I'm working the data PDF platform. So you know the better data about me, but actually what all I'm doing, that content I will be stored in the videos. That video will be an actual size. But reference, everything will be go with very minimal sizes only. So definitely name node will not be go to this process. Mm, yeah. Okay. Because one millions of record, maximum one millions of record metadata information, mostly will come to uh, one, one GB. So capable, you are going to create uh, RAM with at least 128 or 100 GB something. So this is much enough to handle petabyte of data. Right? Yeah, okay. Thank you. So FS images, mainly why it is created, it will be held for secondary name node purpose. That is the main perspective, it will be creating the second, sorry, FS images. Beyond that, nothing. The FS image is called file system images and it's just like a snapshot. It's just like a metadata snapshot. But just if I'm going to see this, this many record, I'm going to write it, okay? So let's say I'm going to take that, if I want to read line by line, it takes for more time because block scanner. Where is a block scanner? Where is a block report? Everything I can go and check line by line. It will be start from the D and will be go here and then it will come one by one the line will come. But name node who is going to be down immediately secondary name node will take the responsible. So that's the reason it's going to be read and write operation will take more time. 
So immediately what will happen is just going to read your FS images and will take the decision and will be capture all the image information to the memory and will be performed immediately. That is the use of FS images. Okay, so in between the layer of secondary name node and name node, if name node failure, secondary name node will be refer the FS images about the metadata information and will be performed as a name node within a time period. So where the FS image will be stored? Name node or secondary name node? In secondary name nodes. No, it's in name node only, uh, but as soon as it get fails, uh, so uh, time by time it will uh, deploy it into secondary name node as well. So initially yes. it will save the name node and time by time it will deploy into secondary name node. Yes, exactly. Lazy follow ups will happen. So FS image always will be created by name node because he just only know what data will be inserted newly. That is a follow with AD class. Am I right? Just before I said. Am I right? Because FS image will be raised based on the FS image, sorry, edit lag will be raised based on the edit lag only FS image will be created just before we have discussed. Am I correct, Chris? Yes. So this edit log and FS image will be created first with the name node and it will be transferred to the second name on the time period. And then if it is going down within the what are the rest of the name node information while it's going down itself, it just identify and will be taking all the backup and it will be survive as a name node again. Once secondary name node will be started, it will be keep on store that edit log and FS images by itself. Okay, like that it will be working. So FS image is nothing but it's like a snapshot. So if suppose you're going somewhere outside, you want to note some details, you want to write it, it will take more time to you. Instead of that, what you're doing, you're just going to take a snapshot. So if you want to get any contact detail or anything else, just to simply just take a snapshot and will be refer it. Whenever you need, you can go and refer it immediately. Likewise, my first image will be performing with a secondary name node based on some index interval. Okay, so if I'm running multiple job, multiple job is working here. Suppose one job is going to be, sorry, uh, multiple jobs running here. Suppose name node is going to be failure, all the job will not be controlled, am I right? So what will be happen? Secondary name node will be taking the incharm and will be keep on monitoring all the jobs. What is happening? There is a business continuity because each job you need to know about where the data is available. That information will be provided by name node only. Correct? There is a connected way may be missed. Or it will be finally it's going to be right somewhere while writing the data because you will be doing any job at the right end of the time. You're going to write some data to that big data cluster again. So Hadoop environment where while you're going to write it, you must know where you're going to write it. While writing the data information also, you must inform to name node. Am I right? So that all will be controlled by FS image and uh, secondary name node. Guys, any question? Um, hello. Yeah. Uh, can you explain the little bit about the edit log? What it will be written in edit okay. log, like health signal or something? Yeah. Mm, no, it's it's like a pulse in, in information only. Let's say I am the client. I'm going to write one GP of theta two um, stash dar one. Okay, this is the directory. I'm going to store it. Let's say for example. So what edit log will do? the client one GP of data, this directory I'm going to write it. So this is a new directory. Edit log will be noticed where this file is available, where this directory is available. And so this is also kind of metadata information, right? Yeah, this is the metadata information. While you're creating the directory, that is also will be stored in edit log when it was created. So after uh, placing the all the data is in data node, 
So mm. the data node will send the information to uh, metadata. So in the same time, the data will be created. No, first it's just going to request with the name node. Name node only can allocate where you are going to store this data. Okay, okay. Where it will be uh, available okay. space? Yeah. I'm the master, I, okay, I have a, a hotel. So which room is available, where you want to stay? That all the information I just in text and noticed in my environment. While you're going to, you're coming to request me, I want to, I want uh, one room for my occupation like this. So what I have to do that I just mentioned in the, some room number to you, and you can see and this is that uh, your size one bedroom or two bedroom, something I can inform you. That you can occupy as per your capable. This information already I just have. Based on that, I'm going to allocate and then only name node will be functioning. I'm the master to note all the information for you. Once it is stored, this directory, this many data will be stored. That information I will be noted in the edit log. When this directory was created, when this data will be stored, suppose if the directory will be moved from one directory to another directory, our file will be moved from one directory to another directory. I want to locate that, right? Then only I cannot miss it. So if any changes that I will be locate and will inform, keep on to edit log. Edit log will be create the FS images on the time period. Okay? Yeah, okay. And the expense, sorry. And the edit log and the metadata is both also like kind of similar, right? Now, we, when, you, when you say this information stored in edit log, so the metadata also do the same work, right? Come again, metadata and edit log. No, actually, uh, when you say uh, all the data block information stores in like, a, like moving or something, so all the information stores in um, edit log, right? Yeah, correct. So the same work also doing the uh, metadata, right? Metadata also doing the same work. No, that is a difference, right? Here, metadata have all the information. Okay. Here, Reddit log only separated about the recent information. And once it's created, oh, yeah. the file yes, will be stored. Yeah, it okay. will be a line by line file. It's a log file. Once that decision will be taken care, name node can store all the information by its RAM itself. Suppose hey. uh, name node going to be down, secondary name node can understand the first images. That FS image will be referred by a edit log. Yeah, yeah, clear, clear. Okay. Mm. Yeah, clear. Thank you. Uh, Any other question, guys? Question. Yeah. Uh, when the name node goes down, the secondary node comes up, right? So during mm. that time frame, is there any breakage in the processing of the data nodes? Uh, no, if any process, it will not be doing that time. Okay, so okay, it will be it's idle. a minimal time limit only. Between mm. this two layer, there is a few time limit. I cannot remember that. Uh, that's based on the heartbeats, right? Every three seconds, it will be identified, and block report will be calculated. Every, every three, three seconds, if it is not reached, then SGFS federation will be started. So while inserting to the data node somewhere, it will be giving some retry attempts. Okay, first time attempt for one minute once. So not a one minute one, 30 seconds or 15 seconds once. It will be trying for with the four retry attempts. Within that, it will be invoked the second in mode and it will take the responsibility while storing the data. Okay, and is there any versioning for the FS image? Because uh, it's of... not a versioning. Each FS image will be created at runtime. While the data will be stored, right? Edit log. Every five minutes while edit log will be stored, then first image will be created by in the backend. So we have multiple FS images. Yes, exactly. Okay. The same FS image will be replica to a second in mode also. Okay. okay. There is a, some calculations there, some algorithm is there. Based on that, it will be created and it will be stored into that second in mode. Okay. That are all part of the hard admin part. Just for the understand, I just informing you. Okay, any other question? Right now, no. whatever we have discussed, you are clear, right? Yeah, we are clear. Okay. okay, now we are discussing about block size. Block size is actual data size. It's a physical data size. Okay, but input split is a logical block size.
So why we have to use law in full split? What is the risk in here? So uh, in, input split is a part of uh, physical and logical split, right? Physical, not a logical uh, size only. This is block size is a physical size of data. Let's say one GB data, it will be divided by 128 MB and will be stored. That's it. So total eight block will be allocated, each block with 128 MB of default size. So total eight will be located. But input split is nothing like that. This is a logical size of data, they are saying. Which means whatever the data will be stored, if it is a continuously will be stored in your data node, then it will be considered as a logical size. Let's say for example, 128 MB of data I have stored. Okay, I just create a new file. Okay, so this is the data, actual data will be stored. I just slice into a four. Okay, so this is a 128 MB. This is 128 MB, this is 128 MB, this is 128 MB. So total is 512, I think 256 and 512. Total 512 MB of data size. Okay, that will be stored here. Suppose this is the block size, each one I just printed. Total file size is 512. And file name will be abc.txt, something the file name that I have stored. So now I'm going to process this data. Always this block size will be converted into input split. So MapReduce concept will be stored from input split onwards. Okay. Please note that without input split, it will not be working in the backend. So that input split will be create the number of mapper. I just say about that map produce, then you'll get some idea. Resource manager, okay. So here only it will come, I just mentioned map produce concept. So whatever the data from block, that block will be created as a input split. Based on the input split, the data will be created as a mapper from the mapper it will be working with intermediate intermediate output this intermediate output only working with sort 
and shuffling and then it will be going to work with the reducer part so reducer going to store again as a anywhere so this is that this is the actual flow so whatever all the data you have right that will be converted as a input split so number of input split equal to number of mapper this is the actual flow will happen the back end so suppose if data will be in sequence continuously this entire data will be a only one record mm, i can mention here 512 mb will be stored here abc.txt file only the block will be allocated above the data with abc.txt here also same here also same here also same so all the file will be stored into that same place with continuous sequence then everything will be create as a only one input split and so this entire continuous data will be occupied by how many mapper i think one mapper only one mapper that's it that's it so only one mapper going to handle your all the data this is called a logical split so this entire the data size of the data will be considered as a single one that is called a logical size but actual physical size each one will be in 128 mb okay any doubts here no no brother okay now what i'm going to do i just going to create for another one file the same data but little for changes okay so suppose i don't have a data here it will be a some other file x y z dot t x t something different file i am going to store it okay and another one 512 mb of another one 128 mb will be stored in different data node so in this case how many input split will be created so there is no required of uh, input split here because uh as per block size it has abc.txt has only 128 mb and xyz.txt uh, has only 128 mb so if there uh, there is a requirement to uh, like combine uh, physical blocks into single uh, logical blocks then only input split will happen yeah that's what i'm asking here how many build inputs should build right Okay. There, if it is a sequence, it will be created as a only one input, one input split. Then here, how many input split? I guess two. One is for ABC, one is for XYZ. No, XYZ we are not handling it. Only we are handling ABC. So it's a two, two mapper, I think. So three yes. mapper. No, two only will be. Two, two. Sorry, two yeah, mapper. Two, two. This is one. This two will be combined. and it will be created another one so instead of 3 here two input split will be created hmm hmm okay in this two input split so the how many mapper only two mapper so two mapper will be functioning here that's it okay so this is the way the map list will be algorithm will be working
I I I bit confused here. So why why in single uh, input split it will not get combined that a b c dot t x t because of x y z is in between. Mm, for clear understanding, I'm mentioning here this is the block one. Okay, this is a block two. Okay. block 3 as well as block 4 so 4 will be available this one block 1 separately available there is no continuity block 2 and 3 okay because some other data will be available but in this sequence when a 3 and 4 will be sitting together so the solution this two will be combined and creating one in first place and this is a separate there is a no continuity one two three something the sequence will be missed so here some other data available. So this will be created one input split. You're getting my point? Wherever, yeah. Whenever you're going to store the data into data node, it will be following some sequence. Am I right? Yeah. So like this, it will be creating an input split. Clear? Yes. Any other question guys? Yeah, Dinesh, uh, actually, I didn't get this concept. So the file size is fight for memory, right? Yeah. So already we loaded the data into four data nodes. Is that correct? No, this is for example, fight for MB will be stored into the same data node. I have a file with uh, this is uh, total file size abc.txt will be uh, two GP. For example, I'm saying fight for MB will be stored in same data node. Okay. Okay. Let's say for example, I'm saying so rest of the one and a half GB data will be stored in different different data node and it will be not in sequence because replication factor some other data will be stored and then only some other data will be stored. So it will be in different places, places it will be stored. Here by storing the data which will be occupied with the continuous block sizes, then it will be created only one input split. I'm saying mm, one minute. For better understanding, we just go through again with our architecture. First, we can see this. Here, yeah, whenever the neighbor can understand if the capable, then only it will be stored. So, what are all the record will be stored into the data node? It will not be entirely while storing it, it will not be following any shuffling. So, it will be following the sequence only. First, it will be loaded. For example, if my data node have 100 GP disk size, then continuous sequence will be stored. In this sequence, while I'm storing the data, if, uh, I am requesting another one client. So client two I am requesting with uh, two GB of data, for example, X Y Z dot T X T something I am requesting. Okay, so this two records was coming right now to a Hadoop and Roman name node. Name node can allocate to 512 MB for this data node 2 itself. And 512 here, 1 GB will be stored here. Something for the client will be suggested. While it is storing the data, data client 1 also will be stored. It. So what will be happen? The data will not be in sequence sometime. Am I right? Because you are also writing and another one client also writes in the data. So first data will be in abc.txt. Second data will be in uh, X, Y, Z, or T, X, T, something will be in. So, data will not be possible to continue sequence. But while you are writing the data only for client to write now, the data will be in sequence, it will be stored here. 
at that time, number of mapper will be helped to reduce it. You get my point? Yeah, yeah. So that is the use of that. So if number of reducers mapper will be reduced, then performance will increase by default automatically. Am I right? It will not be yes. wait for money mapper. Dinesh, this XYZ dot TXT will be handled by a different node. That's what you are saying. Uh, it's not a different node. If data will be stored by mistake, if there is no sequence. Hmm. Then XYZ will be handled by some other. I am the map produce operation. I am doing with ABC dot TXT file only. I mean, how can we? I mean, uh, can we? Can you give a little small example, like uh, how to differentiate like this uh, uh, missing of the sequence? Is it serial numbering you are saying or? Uh... No, while storing it, name node only take the decision, right? So if suppose I'm going to write one GP of data, also two GP of data. There is name node can apply some algorithm, can understand what all the data node is free right now. So client one will be writing to data node two and three. Let's say for example, client two will be writing to three and four. Okay. So if writing the data will be meshed up together, there is a chances, right? So that will be identified by a name node. Few cases, it's not a few cases, major cases, name node can take the decision and will inform it because all the requests will be getting here as a sequence method only. So first one GP of data, if you're going to store it, one. I'm sorry. So name node can take the decision. If suppose you're going to store one GB data, then it will be allocated with already. Okay, you can take data node two and three and you can store the data with the data node two with the sequence of uh, first to four. And data node three will be the sequence of 10 to 12. Something it will be providing the information. And then only client two will be taking care here. Client two also it will be suggested to store the data, data node two with uh, four to six, and client data node three you can store the data with uh, twelve to sixteen, and data node four for rest. Like that it will be providing the sequence. So that's not a problem. The data will be sequentially will be stored, but again again you are writing the data, it will not be in sequence, right? There is a combination will be you are while getting your some delays, anything will happen. So name node, what it will do, it will take the decision based on the block size only. Okay, so it will be stored, sorry, based on the data node. Uh, what are all the data node utilization very less, that will be providing the first priority to that. So it will be stored in that meshing width. But block size will be indifferent. Please notice that. Block one will be stored abc.dxt and directory will be directory one. Block two, the data will be stored with a different file and it will be located directory two. So something, it will be modified. So this is also directory one. This is also directory one. Okay, likewise it will be stored. So whenever I'm raising the query, I'm locating the via the directory only. At the time it's going to be check it out whether if it is both will be same, then it will be considered as a one mapper. Okay, you're getting my point. If suppose I'm passing my query to directory two of the data, then it will be creating different number of mapper. Based on my directory data only, I'm going to take the decision. This abc.txt will be handled for the employee data. This xyz will be handled by some accounts related data but the data will be stored to the directory. Whenever I'm passing the query, that will be referred based on the directory only. So all the employee data will be the directory name is employee. I just located. So immediately that will be identified where the data is available based on that it will be creating the number of map. Okay. Any query, any doubts are getting my yeah. point? Yeah, I got it, but oh, where this uh, input split uh, come into picture? Input split, the mapper will be created. That is what I'm saying, right? Whatever the blocks is data, blocks data will be converted as an input split. So input split is nothing but block size is actual data, file object. 
input split will be convert as a uh, serialized data because serialized data only we are going to handle it whatever the data will be right into that your file object directly will not be using the object we are going to read each data so at the time input split will be following the serialization and then only based on the input split serialization will be creating number of mapper okay because you whatever the data you are going to write to the directory you don't want to know about the file name you want to know about the content if suppose i'm going to get the count of the particular file of the data i want to find each record so input split working as a record based so this is record reader concept based on that only it's going to be located internally and fetching the data this is the data this is the actual data file this is the records and then only map will be raised based on the map only intermediate uh, output will be generated for each map yeah okay so you are saying like two inputs right right so yeah if it is a sequence can... both will be considered as a one input two block will be considered as a one input this is a one input here one here one okay yeah okay so if there is no xyz dot txt then completely only one input split yeah like that it will be considered and created okay okay so input split will help for the performance basis Hello. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Got it. So one file, one input split. In input split, right? Is that yeah. correct? Okay. Got it. So if it is a sequence, both file will be created as a one input split. If suppose I am going to create ten, ten five blocks will be stored in the same place. Then how many input split? There is a one data only. I am store it. Let's say sequence. I am going to store ten blocks. How many inputs? Yeah, one. So only one, one mapper. Only, only one, one input will be working because everything will be joined together and will be available in the same place. It need not to check any other places. So sort and shuffling will be reduced. There is lot of back end uh, performance will be happen raised. Correct. Okay, got, got it. Okay. Any other question, guys? Or shall we go next? Hello. Uh, the reducer will depends on depends on the mapper, right? Mapper uh, operation. It's a reducer based on your short and shuffling. Because if you have multiple short and shuffling, it's a reducer always based on your intermediate outputs, not for the mapper. Let's say, for example, you are going to get the count value, okay, for the one GPF data. If suppose number of mapper will be created two, the intermediate layer output will become only two. Am I right? So 10 million record total record you just slice and store it. So number of mapper will be created only two. Each one for uh, 50,000 records will be produced. Intermediate output will come 50,000 comma 50,000. Based on that, reducer will be used. Mm, Correct. Oh okay. uh, yeah, okay. And the third day operation where it will happen? Our uh, third day will come to hive. At the time, I will tell you how third day is working. Yeah, what are the okay. types of survey how it is working all the types of survey we are going to see with hands on there yeah okay so any other question till now we are discussing about this one day so fault tolerance will be taken care by replication factor high availability already we have discussed the zookeeper we have discussed history server is a monitor of zookeeper demon is called history server Okay, if zookeeper is alive, history server will be enabled. I guess. Okay, so job history server internally it will be located with even yarn integration. If any job is active running, also it will be interact with the zookeeper. Zookeeper separately will be working with Quorum uh, uh, P or something. Uh, during that session, I will show you that all the details how it is working. Okay. 
and resource manager this are also the next point we have to discuss because we don't have a time it's almost to we are in. so we can discuss storage layer we have discussed processing layer we have discussed resource manager that we have to discuss today okay so in tomorrow session we can discuss in this point and then we can go ecosystems and then how to two and three it's with difference so there is a lot of changes is available that all i just noted okay any question because yarn architecture will take more time so i will consider for the tomorrow discussion any query question guys yeah dinesh uh, uh, i have basic question uh, so yeah. we are replicating the data for suppose we have 1 tb data and we are replicating into 3 3 or 4 times okay. based on the configuration yeah. so is it not a uh, extra burden for uh, for the maintenance it's not a extra burden it's actually burden only but that for safety purpose we are using So in Hadoop 3x, they will be using Erasure encoding concept to reduce the number of replication. Okay, that is a different concept. So because if you are going to store one TB with the three replication, three TB you want to spare the allocation. Am I right? So the costing for the allocation also you want to spare more. But Hadoop yeah. 3x, they will be using for Erasure encoding and uh, other concept processes there, R of code and parity block something is available. Based on that, they will be avoid that and will minimal cost only we have to pay for the safety purpose. So two hundred percent you will be using it. So one GB into two hundred will be in two three GB a TB of data you will be stored. But in Hadoop three X they will be trying to avoid that only for one G one TB of data for replication of two hundred uh, sorry two hundred percent overhead. Like a two TB of data, additionally you will be spend it. They will be using only fifty percent. So, like in this, I am saying. So one GB into three, three GB. Suppose if it is you go with the Erasure encoding, it's a normal replication. But in Erasure encoding, one GB into start a full or three the TB is a three uh, replication you don't want to apply. Only point five you have to provide. So it's not a full point five GB. So like one point five GB is enough. Okay, so like this will be stored. So how you are getting the cost benefit? So one fifty percent overhead will be reduced, right? Yeah. Like this they are doing. That is a concept which is internally available out of code something. So that we have to discuss in this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Okay, these eight things you will be getting about the session. What the session was covered? The syllabus. Let's go to the training table. As well, class notes. Hello. 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 that new vm will be uploaded to that particular directory you can get it with the recent update if suppose we will go with hadoop 4 was released then you don't want to wait it you can download the vm you can do your own practice okay okay guys any other question <laughs> 